Hey, hey everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to do four rounds. Two that are MDF, two that are canvases. They're both, all of them are 10 inches around. I'm preparing them to uh, do a dirty pour on. I'll let them dry really well and then I'm going to embellish them just to show you what I'm aiming for. I've already done two that are well dry and just wanted to show you. I did add um, pearlescent medium into some of these colors so it does have some shimmer and I'm going to paint angels on these and this one is a blue one. don't know if you can see the shimmer. When they're not glossy, which they will be at the end of when I paint them, when they're not glossy they don't show the shimmer as much as when they're glossy. So, but I wanted to show you, I've got an order for six of them and so I've got the two painted, I've got four more to paint and then I'm going to embellish. This is a photograph that I printed out of a red one that I did with an angel and I did um, iridescent medium and metallic gold and then I embellished with a fine tip uh, deco art writer and so it's kind of dimensional and then I sealed it with a high gloss varnish and so I've got six angel more angel rounds to do like this but in a little bit different color schemes according to their request. So I just wanted to show you too um, when I embellish with a deco art writer fine tip this is what it looks like. It's just this part right here and it screws on to any two ounce craft bottle of paint. So this is on my deco art white bottle of paint. I just screw it right on but the the tip is sold by itself. It is below my video and my Amazon link under my recommendations. You have to scroll down a bit but it's just the tip and it's made by deco art. It's an ultra fine tip writer and it can be it can be screwed on to a two ounce bottle, an eight ounce bottle, or it can be also you can purchase like a Hobby Lobby these little plastic bottles that come uh, and you can add any paint color into this and then screw one on. But I wanted to show you how the the fine tip writer works. Um, you can totally screw, this is the way it comes in the package. So it has a top that is this top portion right here. That unscrews and it's got a little fine needle inside. That needle is inserted into your fine tip writer so you insert it in there when you're closing it up so that your little writer tip does not get dried up inside. But you can totally take it apart and clean it with a toothpick and everything. So actually, see this part unscrews and comes off. So there's two pieces. And then the little needle part, this part unscrews and comes off. So you can totally disassemble it clean it out, change colors, whatever. It's all cleanable with a toothpick and a lot of little scrubbing, you know, with warm water, soapy water. And then you put the, you screw the little needle back on. This little protective area gets screwed back on and that's how you attach it to any two ounce bottle or eight ounce bottle that has this size opening. And then you just give it a little push test run on a piece of paper or something and then you totally draw in your paint details with this fine tip. I love it. It's the greatest invention. This is easier to me than paint pens and the great part is is you can screw it onto any color imaginable. And then once again the top has a needle in it that's smaller than this needle 
and you insert the needle inside of the needle, screw it on and that keeps it sealed up so it does not dry. So that's what I'm going to embellish those with. So this is just going to be a dirty pour video. I'm going to show you really quickly how I mix up my colors and I wanted to also show you so I'm doing two two MDF rounds and uh, I ordered these from Amazon they're in my Amazon link recommendations they're about a quarter to half inch thick I love them and you can you can uh, attach a hanging piece on the back. You could uh, glue a loop of ribbon or something like that. You can paint the back of it and put it on a plate rack or on an easel and let it just stand. You could put felt on the back of it or cork if you want it to look that way. The sky's the limit with what you can do with these. Then I have two of these that are just the 10 inch canvases and you have to uh, add the push pins with a hammer because the, the round canvases have an MDF frame which are super hard. So I have me one of these little handy small hammers that are just like a hand size and that's in my Amazon link as well. I keep this around for hammering all my push pins in. So the key is, you know, obviously with anything you're painting when you're doing pouring is to keep it all level. Okay, so today, oh and one other thing. So some of my colors are opaque which means they are not transparent. That means they've got a little white in them or something that, you know, gives them uh, a non-transparent look. So like this pink here is not transparent. The hot pink magenta color is not. I have a periwinkle color that is not transparent. They're opaque. I've got metallics already. They're mixed up. I've got a vermilion which is an orangish red. It's opaque. It's not transparent. My burnt sienna is not transparent. I've got Master's Touch for the most part, Liquitex Basics, an Art, Artist Loft Red here, and a PBO Iridescent Gold, Precious Gold is right there. And um, I'm going to add an Iridescent Medium to some of my colors. And I want to show you the difference. I've got two that I have found locally at Hobby Lobby and Michaels, okay? So every brand is going to be different. This is a Liquitex Basics. It says iridescent medium. It's $10 for an 8 ounce tube, which is a lot of paint. Super heavy. This is a 4 ounce tube from Artist Loft, which is Michael's iridescent medium. 4 ounce. So this was $10. This was about 5 So you get double the product, double the price. Okay, so the thing about these is with any company, okay, also you cannot buy a white iridescent medium because then, then it will uh, lighten your colors. This is strictly to put shimmer into your color that you want to add shimmer to. And I did a little test swatch on a piece of notebook paper. And you really can't tell a lot of difference except for this one is a little creamier colored, this one is a little less creamy colored, this one has a little bit more texture to it and it is a little bit more sparkly. You see how, I don't know if you can see, but if you see how sparkly, it's a little bit more sparkly. So the Artist Loft from Michaels is more sparkly than the Liquitex Basics by just a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the Liquitex Basics today because I haven't used it yet. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I had zoomed in so you could see all that, but I'm going to zoom out. And I've got some ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to 
this squirt it out. I'm going to just take the whole thing off. Sometimes it's easier. I've got to clean my finger off so I can use all my, my strength. My hands have arthritis. And it doesn't want to come off. That's interesting. It does not screw off. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to put... Oh, and, and this, this one is more liquidy than the Artist Loft. The Artist Loft one does not come out liquidy looking. It comes out thick. So, there is a difference in that. I'm going to put a little in there. I'm going to put a little bit more in the purple because I have a lot of purple. I've got a lot of red. I'm going to put more in there. Everything else doesn't need it. And then I'm going to start with the red. I'm just going to mix the iridescent medium into the red first before I add my Floetrol. Because I just wanted to see if I could see sparkles. I'm going to add a little more because I don't see a whole lot. There is a pearlescent medium too, but if you can, just get the iridescent medium. I know that the, uh, Michael's, the Artist Loft brand, iridescent medium has been out of stock online and in the stores here recently because they must be selling a lot for people that are doing acrylic pouring because you can add that shimmer to any color you want to. So, I guess I see a little sparkle in that. Now I'm going to do a one-to-one -one ratio paint to Floetrol. I don't measure. I just eyeball it. But that's my recipe is one-to-one -one paint to Floetrol. Doesn't matter what brand. Doesn't matter if it's two paint or craft bottle paint. I use the same ratio all the time. You can always put a little more Floetrol into it, something if you want to to make it go further, stretch further. It will not affect the efficiency of it. Floetrol is used as an extender or like a pouring medium instead of pouring medium because it's cheaper and it's made to keep your paint wet longer. So that's why we mix it in. We can't just add straight water into our paints because it would break it down and that does have shimmer. So that's good shimmer. I'm happy with that. So some of the paint colors are going to have shimmer and some aren't. And sometimes they'll just, the shimmer will go away depending on what color covers, you know, which other color. So that you can't really predict too much. Okay, so now I'm going to stir this ultramarine blue up. Got some shimmer going on, which is a good thing. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add my Floetrol. It always looks like you got more Floetrol than you do paint sometimes, and that's okay if you do, but anytime I just pour it in, I'm just trying to eyeball about the same amount. So if I have an ounce of paint, I put a roughly an ounce of Floetrol, or I go over a little bit. Because like I said, the Floetrol is not going to compromise your fluid art project at all. It will not compromise it. It's great. I used it for faux finishes for 20 years. So it will not mess up anything. Now this one is a little bit thicker. It was uh, Liquitex Basics and it's in a tube and most tube paint you do have to add water to. So my water is 90% water, 10% Floetrol. I did that. Gina DeLuca shared that a long time ago and I like doing that because what happens it comes out a little milky like skim milk looking but it mixes into your paint mixture easier than if you just mixed your water in because it helps bind with that paint a little bit easier after you've mixed your paint and Floetrol together. So always mix the paint and Floetrol together first to help them bind together and then I add the water mixture last. To just to get it to the right consistency. I'm going to do one more little bit and I don't do a big squirt. I do them little bits at a time to make sure that you're not going to have too much water because it's harder to go backwards. You can always add more water. You can't take it out. So that's shimmery and the consistency is really good I think. I like to see it. It's like melted 
ice cream warm honey. So it, it lands on the surface of the paint and kind of dissipates and it goes away. If it's so watery that it goes away immediately, to me that's a little bit on the thin side. I'm going to go straight into my purple because blue will mix into purple without changing the color. I'm going to stir up this purple with the iridescent medium and see if I need to add any more. So I'm doing that first. I see shimmer so it's good. Now I'm going to add my flow trawl and that was the last one I need to add a flow trawl to. So I can close up that bottle and it, with flow trawl it's always got to be latex based. That's in a gallon. It's about $14 at Lowe's or Home Depot if you're a military or a retired military they give you an extra 10% off there and um, the quart is about six dollars but you know I always get the gallon because you get more bang for your buck when you get a gallon than you do for a quart okay this is a tube paint I'm going to add just a pinch of water. It doesn't really need much. It's just about perfect right now. And that's probably because with two paint, you usually always have to add water, but I did add maybe a little bit more flow trawl than I do have paint in there, which will, you know, help thin it out a bit and make it where you don't have to add as much water, which is really what you'd like, is to not add a ton of water because you don't want to compromise the acrylic paint and break it down because then it will kind of like separate and turn into these little fragments on your they all break apart on your painting and if they do that then you know that you added too much water to it okay I've got some white in my dirty dirty squeeze bottle it's artist loft white mixed one to one with flow trawl and water is added so I've got that in a squeeze bottle I don't have any in my cup because I always keep some mixed up. So that is this. And I think I'm about ready to pour. The only thing I have left to do is add something to make cells because I do want cells in these. And my choice that I always have been using lately here is OGX, which is the brand Coconut Milk Anti Breakage Serum. This is a very specific hair product. The first, the first ingredient is dimethicone. That is the magical ingredient that makes the cells. So look on the back and make sure it says dimethicone. But you can usually find it in Walmart, Target, drugstores, or you can get it in the Amazon link below my video. This bottle will last a year or more. It goes forever. Silicone typically takes like a drop per ounce of paint mixture. So if you've got eight ounces of paint, then you would put eight drops of silicone in. With OGX, you put one drop per color. One drop. And not a pump. If I squeeze this pump all the way down in my hand, I'll get at least a teaspoon of hair product. I don't need that much. I just need one drop. So what I do is I get me a little plastic bottle that has a dropper in it from Hobby Lobby or wherever you can find it and I poured some of this OGX into here in the dropper bottle. It's just easier to dispense it this way than to try to squeeze that pump just very slightly. So I'm going to add one drop to each cup Yeah, if you get two in or you know whatever that's not going to kill it by any means um, but you don't have to go overboard with this it doesn't take a lot and it has way less residue when your painting dries way less residue than silicone does so you still have to clean it off if you're if you're going to seal it you have to clean it with Dawn dish liquid or um, Jill Jackson from Sister Earthification, she cleans hers with uh, carbonated mil uh, mineral water. So if you can find mineral water, you can clean it with that. 
fetch. You do have to clean it if you're going to seal it. So basically I've got to just stir it in to the cups, to the ones I added it into. I'm going to just go straight into these colors. I'm just wiping off my stick every time instead of dirtying up extra sticks. So I'm just wiping it down each time. Do the pink next. That's gotten thicker while it sat, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. You do all the water and everything before you add the OGX, but if you have to add in a little water afterwards, that's okay too. It's not going to screw up your whole thing. Okay. It takes very little stirring. It really does. And if you have any little chunks of anything, make sure to get them out because you don't want these little chunks coming off in your painting either. I'm going to go straight into this vermilion, which is an orangish red. The next one is burnt sienna. I'm just going to go straight into here because I don't care if a little bit of the red gets in there. I don't, it's not going to hurt it any. I'm going to go straight into my... This is Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. It's called Brown Red, but it's a metallic and it looks like copper. Their copper looks totally different from this and I think this color looks more like copper than their copper does. <laughs> This looks more like a copper penny to me. So I like the brown red color better than their copper. And finally, I'm going to wipe my stick off for the gold. I don't want to get the copper in the gold. One last cup to stir. And that is all. So my paints are ready. So I take me a quick picture of this so I can share with you the colors I used in case you do want to know. I try to be as informative as I can for people that are wanting to learn. Some people just want to kind of run through it, skip it, and um, just get to the good part and that's fine because I've done that myself but for those that actually want to know actual colors I do try to keep that information all right got my level here if you're new to pouring it's really important to have your canvas level. It just makes your life easier. If, if it's not level, it, the paint's going to flow off one side. You're going to lose the beauty that you created. Uh, so that's why it's important. So I just keep a little level around and just check it out, you know, occasionally. I do have a torch. With OGX, you don't have to heat it, but it does pop the air bubbles. That's really why I use it. OGX, you just have to be patient and the cells will grow by themselves. So, just a little side note on that. I just had to show you really quick. These were the paintings I did the other day. This was what I did on a metal round. This was video number, I believe it was 420. Uh, I was trying to do the Shelley Art Bloom style, so it has uh, some metallic rich espresso and then everything else was just white satin kind of finish. But anyway, you can clean up the back. I can totally clean that off. I could paint the back. It has a little stand. I got these a while back from Michaels, I think, or Hobby Lobby. I think it was Michaels, but I'm not sure. I got a, like a six pack of them. They are 10 inch circles. 
They also have a little hanger so you can hang it on the wall. Isn't that cool? But it's like aluminum. And um, so I did that one. I did a little tile just plain with the leftover paint. And then I did three six inch tiles trying to play with that bloom style, the Shelly bloom, Shelly art style that she has a bloom technique. I haven't gotten there yet, but they're still pretty. They've got a satin finish to them. These are six inch tiles that I taped off. And a lot of people said this one reminded them of a tree. This one's got metallic gold in it and um, it's got some shimmer with the green and all, so it's really pretty. So those were just ones that I did the other day. Just wanted to show them to you. These 10 inch uh, canvases require three ounces of paint, so I'm gonna put about five ounces of paint into my cup. I've got little five ounce cups. I'm gonna fill them up and hopefully that'll be enough paint. So these canvases have push pins so I don't have to uh, put them on, prop them on anything like I do the, the MDF ones. So I've got four to do and each one is a little bit different color combination. So this first one I'm going to do is probably the most different from all the others. She wanted um, the red, reds and earth tones so I'm going to use the gold, the copper, burnt sienna, vermilion, and the red on this one and maybe just a pop of white here and there so this is a five ounce cup and I want to fill it up gonna be a dirty pour get me a push pen ready The other thing is if your canvases are not super tight, you spray the back of it with water, let it dry, and it'll make it tight as a drum. That's a good pointer for old canvases, new canvases, painted canvases, unpainted canvases, any kind, it doesn't matter. You can wet the back and it'll help stretch that canvas back tight again as it dries. Okay, I'm gonna... Um, do a couple holes and that releases the air pressure and it doesn't stick to the bottom of the cup. And I'm going to let it sit. I'm not going to touch it for a few minutes because that's what I like about OGX is it will grow on its own. So I'm going to put it up here. I will pop the air bubbles just get rid of the air bubbles. That doesn't change the cells at all. She wanted reds and golds. That's pretty good. I think what I'll do is leave the copper out. Use the two reds. Throw in some of the red, the uh, magenta colored. So I'm going to start with the red. Poke a couple of holes. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now see the white showed up here, but it didn't show up there. Isn't that interesting? Alright, so I'm going to move that one back. Pop the air bubbles. This one already. It's been sitting for a few minutes. OGX is in it. I'm going to go ahead and tilt. And I'm just going to kind of tilt back and forth. I kind of want to cover my surface as much as I can before I let it go over the sides to avoid a messy table. Yep, 
You can also kind of predetermine what areas you like the least. And I know I like the copper area the least with this red. I thought I would like it, but I do not. So I'm actually going to tilt it this way over the sides. And I got to, you know, keep in mind that there's a canvas right there near me, so I don't want to dump on it either. But I'm going to let this paint go over the sides some. And I'm using my hand to kind of catch it because I don't want to lose a lot of that paint. And now I do want to lose some of that copper. So I'm going to let that go over. I'm painting an angel and I'm going to have gold around the edges. So I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about trying to get anything specific in this painting um, because of doing that. I think I will put a little gold down here. Just kind of put a little on and you can kind of, you know, swish your stick around. Kind of add some stuff to it if you need to. You can kind of blow on it. To change some some shapes, but that helps just put a little gold in that area. But I think I'm going to leave it just as is. Make sure all my sides are covered, which they are. The other thing is I try to kind of just go around the bottom edge a little bit. Because if you have a lot of paint that's dripping off, if you have the weight of that paint underneath, it'll continue to drag your paint over the sides. So I do kind of make sure that it's gone a bit. So I think, I think I'm going to go with this one and just leave it the way it is. I'm using red so I don't have to worry about my messy hands. I'm going to just let it go. To the edges for the most part. And I want to get rid of this magenta color. It's too strong. She wanted reds and golds and I may not even want that white. But So what I'm going to do is tilt the other areas that I like better first. The gold really is predominant on this one, which is okay. I'm going to get rid of some of that white, though. The white is too powerful. And then I'm going to stretch this way and get rid of some of that pinkish tone. So now I'm just going to get back over here and add some paint on the sides that's missing. The angel will be painted in the middle. And she's going to have some gold added to her. So I may want to do a little something with this one. My first thought is to do a balloon smash. Just to maybe pull some colors through. Well, I don't know if it'll work, but I'm going to try it. This is, I didn't want it to be like a balloon roll looking thing. This is just a background, but what it did was it broke up that gold on the surface. That was my intent, which worked. So now I can totally 
you know, blow it around if I want to with a straw. Some of that white. I wish actually I'd put a little bit more brown in. Again, it's just a background. I'm not going to get real particular with it. Checking the sides. There is that one. Okay, I'm going to put cups down for this one because it's going to be on MDF. Prime this or gesso it or whatever. MDF typically does not warp. Wood will, but this does not, so I'm just going with it. These I can pour straight on. I'm going to move that up there. last one is going to be a multicolored one and let me get that a little bit further out of the way this one is going to have there's a tiny bit of red left but um, I don't know that I want to use it mm -hmm. I want to just use my purples and pinks All right, so this one is pretty colors. Going to switch out. Let that one sit. This one is ready to roll. If you see a bubble or two, you can even blow it with your breath. You don't even have to have a heat gun. So this one is ready to tilt, and there's really no area that I don't care for. I actually want some of that purple so I'm gonna try to hang on to it as much as I can. And now I'm going to tilt back to try to get some of that purple to stretch out. I'm just going to make sure my sides are covered and I can pick up stuff from the table because it's the similar colors. And I'm not going to drip on that. If it's on the edge of the board, that's okay. But I don't want to drip on the, uh, the bluish purple part. Okay, so the only thing I don't have is some purple on the sides and all I do is just stick my finger in the purple cup and dab a little and that totally makes it look like what was there. Now, I kind of want to stick a little purple in here. So what I'm going to do again is just put like a little splash or so of purple can't, you can't rub purple around too much with red because it will turn brown. So I'm trying to be delicate with it.
I want to get rid of a little of this red right here. So I'm going to add a little bit of gold. You can even take your finger and softly, you can almost control your finger better than you can a stick to be honest. Again, a background, so it does not have to be perfect. I am good with this. And that one's done. So I'm just going to move my cups here over to the table. I'm going to wipe off the red on my hands so I don't get that into my next pour since it doesn't really have red in it. This part I can just totally wipe off. It's good. The beauty of acrylic pours is it's messy but fun. This pink is too bold so I know that that's the area I want to kind of get rid of because um, it stands out too much and it's not in the other areas. So I'll tilt in the opposite direction at first. See how you can just get rid of what you don't like by kind of leaving it as the last area to tilt. That kind of that kind of helps with your issue. I kind of like it the way it is. Um, I think I'm gonna throw in where this pell pink is. Put a little of this magenta just over areas to kind of get rid of the pell pink. I can kind of stick my finger in some periwinkle and get rid of that pink spot. Now I'm gonna. So there's not any magenta much on this side, so I can just add, so kind of swish it through with my stick, then go back with my straw and totally make it random feeling. What the heat does is it pulls up little tiny, tiny cells. So it'll help pop out some cells that were, you know, in more solid areas and that's fine but it doesn't really help much with big cell formation. So I'm just um, sticking my finger in where I want to get rid of some stuff. I'm going to add a little magenta over here. Just going to swish my finger through. Take off the excess paint and there it is. And it's got some pretty shimmer with the purple. The purple is pretty much and the ultramarine blue is where the shimmer is. The rest doesn't have the shimmer. Um, I may stick a little, little finger right there of the blue. but. Again, this is going to have an angel painted. It's going to have shimmer gold around the edges. So a lot of that you're not going to even see in the end results. I will do a video later on once they're dried and I paint them with the angels. I'll do a fast speed video, video because it takes hours to paint them. So uh, there'll be a fast speed video showing how I do it. And I do it with, I'm going to use the Artist Loft iridescent medium for the shimmery parts and then I'm going to use a metallic gold probably something like deco art uh, vintage brass or 24 karat gold and then the rest will be done with the white 
bottle of paint and the little deco art ultra fine tips that's how I'll put the detail in and it actually will dry a little bit dimensional it kind of stands up off of the surface a little bit because it's straight paint out of the bottle so it gives it a little raised feeling which really just makes it look extra special so I will post that in another video for you but that ends this video I'm gonna move this to the table and I can totally pour this on my puppy pad See right here? And just let that sit and that'll be something pretty when it dries that I can use for jewelry too. So um, I can even totally take got hair in my mouth here. Take my stick and just drag it. Let it make its little thing, and that'll be some pretty jewelry. See, there's just you can take cups that are left over and turn them over on your puppy pad. And those will leave little puddles once they've drained out of the cup. And I just let this puppy pad sit for days and dry. Then I've got all these beautiful skins that I can work on for jewelry later. So I'm always trying to figure out ways to recycle what I do have and try not to waste as much as I can. I'll even combine the two reds. Some has sparkles and some doesn't. So it goes into my squeeze bottle. And I would say this paint has been in this bottle for up to a year with different reds added in off and on. And so then I'll use this for controlled swipes down the road. So totally keep my paint that I don't use to make sure that I can do something beautiful with it later. The other thing you can do with which I think is brilliant because I've seen other people do it is you just take off your glove and get my finger out you put it over your cup and that keeps it airtight that's a paper cup so I don't know how long it'll keep I also use saran wrap to cover things that does really well at keeping it nice and airtight I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out all the links below the video where it says show more down below on your laptop or the down arrow on your mobile device. Check out my, um, I just put a new basics for beginners video out just showing how to mix paints, different brands, and just using Floetrol one with OGX, one without with the same colors to compare it and um, I have a new platform that I started back in the summer where I teach how to paint with acrylics traditionally usually using your paint brushes in acrylics if you want to learn how to paint traditional stuff and I do an occasional fluid piece in that platform as well those are $35 classes and it is the link is embrace your creative spirit down in the below the video if you're interested in that or you know somebody that would like to learn how to paint they can do it in the comfort of their own home and never have to go out to a class to take a class 
So I'm going to look at all these little pretty things on the table and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Hugs everybody. Bye bye.